Hi everyone. Um, this is a little bit different video, and、uh, I'm I'm torn.、Uh, really, it was psychologically very difficult for me to make this video because I have a nine-year-old son, and today the FDA committee voting was very difficult for me. I kind of expected they would vote yes,、um, just because. I know there are many children that have、uh, comorbidity and other health risk factor that could、uh, get them, you know, into a very bad shape if they were infected with COVID nineteen. They could be hospitalized and even death. And if I were their parents, I would be very much want the vaccine available for them. Uh, so I completely understand the ultimate decision. If the committee had voted no、uh, for Pfizer's vaccine for five to eleven, then we would be denying the vaccine for these children essentially. And、um, as a parent, I would not want that to happen.、Uh, but at the same time, everyone kept in the meeting kept mentioning the how the vaccine is. Benefit is clearly outweighed the risk.、Um, I'm just having a you know a little bit dull in that when they、uh, reference these benefit、uh, mostly based on、uh, only half data, you know, half estimation and models. That really cast a little doubt in me. And you know, let's let's take a look of what Pfizer and FDA told us today in a very quick manner. So the Pfizer told us、um, th three children contracted COVID nineteen in the vaccine branch of the phase three study, and sixteen was infected in the placebo branch. That translates to into a relative efficacy of ninety point seven percent. Now, no one in the meeting mentioned the number of absolute risk reduction. Now, I went ahead and did some calculation. The absolute risk reduction equals to the control event rate minus intervention event rate.、Uh, that would give us a two point one eight percent. And the number need to vaccine to prevent one COVID case would be one divided by two point one eight percent. That equals to about forty six. So for one million vaccinated five to eleven year old, we could prevent theoretically about twenty one thousand seven hundred and thirty nine cases of symptomatic infections. So the CDC also presented some epidemiology data. And now more than 1.9 million of five to 11 year old have been infected by COVID-19, with a total about 8,300 hospitalization. But about 18% of the hospitalization was not due to COVID, but for some other reasons, and the CDC official admitted that during the meeting. So COVID caused hospitalization would be about. Six thousand eight hundred and six cases. They also said that one third of the hospitalization had no comorbidity, and that would be about two thousand two hundred and forty six cases. Now that is out of one point nine million infections in that age group. That translate into about point one two percent of hospitalization rate for healthy children with COVID. So if we vaccinate one million five to eleven, we could theoretically prevent twenty one thousand seven hundred and thirty nine cases of symptomatic infections. That would roughly equals to preventing twenty six hospitalization of healthy children. Now the FDA used six different models to predict the risk and benefit in all model, and they predicted the excess myocarditis or pericarditis hospitalization to be one hundred and fifty six per million fully vaccinated, and that is like more than five times or six times、uh, more than my estimation of hospitalization of healthy children caused by COVID. And、um, someone please tell me my math is very wrong, and I would like to be corrected. 
Uh, if you are a scientist or health profession, please correct correct me and let me know how I can think differently. Uh, today I'm just not very convinced. Um, now just in in case you ask me, um, I am very pro vaccine, and every one of my adult member in my family are vaccinated with either the Moderna or the Johnson and Johnson. Uh, but when it comes to looking at this data today, uh, as a scientist, I'm not entirely convinced. Uh, Pfizer didn't tell us how the duration, you know, how long that antibody is going to last. They didn't tell us T cell immunity. They didn't even know if or how much this vaccine can prevent transmission between children and between children and adult. Um, so there's just not enough data overall. And as a parent, I feel like I need to gamble on the vaccine benefit for my child. That is very much not acceptable at this point. Um, and I understand you may think very differently uh, than me. So I hope this video doesn't get labeled as misinformation. Uh, you know how these things are uh, lately. And my most afraid uh, outcome would be how if this EUA turned out to be a uh, mandate at local and state level, that would be very unfortunate um, at the very least. Uh, so that is all for this video. Uh, I will make a regular, very informative video of COVID-related topic uh, based on fact and evidence uh, this weekend, this Sunday. So uh, if my channel doesn't get warning or that get a strike or doesn't get labeled as misinformation, and I hope I can see you uh, in the upcoming next video. That's all. Bye. Take care.